Happy Throwback Thursday, Docketeers. How is everybody doing today or this evening? Everybody have a good day. Linda, Dynamite, Tennessee Mom, Tom Vaughn, Sam Willow, Little Red Riding Hood, Mo, Jennifer, Mama Smith, Gloria Fritz, Austin P. Gio, D. LaPlante, or LaPlante, Lori Marie, Roberta Kaiser, CD Survivor, Dynamite, the Gemini. <clears throat> um so what I got for you tonight, gang, is Nicole Mobley's interview and they tried to do a controlled call with her, but unfortunately it didn't work. Uh it's about a even after I cut all the fat off of it, it's still two hours long. Um, but when I went back and watched it, it was, I don't know, I must have been half asleep or something the first time I watched it. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Uh, thank you, Elena, for the super sticker. Um, I am kind of a mess right now because I had a bunch of stuff come in. Um, and I'd like to get some more people in before before we start because we got some decisions to make to make guys they're going to charge 32 bucks an hour for the video calls um so you all need to tell me what how you want to proceed. Do you want video calls or jail calls or both? I originally requested both, but the sheriff changed the prices as of yesterday. Uh, Toby Bird Dash, Dr. Cap, The Hypocrisy, Amy Patrice, Amanda, Amanda, yeah, right, so it's kind of, you know, Yeah. DD Odom says I want to hear the I want to hear the calls when they start turning on Tisha. Yeah. I just mine. And another thing, thank you, Petty Deb, for the super sticker. And she says yeah, both is the regular jail calls like I've been playing or, and the video calls, Petty Deb. Um, they keep moving. It's as simple as this, guys. They keep moving the field goal post. It's, it's as simple as that. 
It is simple as that. They're profiting from this child's murder. They won't admit it, but they are. Hi, Fafuki. And they're proving it by doing exactly what they're doing. They're, they are changing prices as they go. JR, he says audio during and after the trial is fine with me. And that reminds me of the other thing I wanted to tell you. I stopped boosting the regular jail calls at about 9.50 last night. And at 9.53, I got an email from them, from the corrections department. So now we have all of her prison calls. And guess what, guys? Those didn't cost a damn dime. And there's 16 calls. Thank you, Julia, for the super sticker. Yeah, the prison calls don't cost a penny, but the sheriff, they're going to gouge your eyeballs out. And, you know, it's just my opinion, but it's either one of two things. They're either trying to profit or they flat don't want to put the work in and do it. It's, it's as simple as those two things. Um, it'll be Nicole Mobley. Maybe, may, may she, um, she's the one that started talking to Tisha or, and Tisha was wanting her to do some shady stuff. Thank you, Amanda, for the super sticker. You're welcome. And thank you so much. And Kim C, thank you so much. Danielle Sweeney says, jail calls, that's insane. As much as I want to see them, that's way too much to keep up with. With tears rolling down, emoji. Yeah, I mean, and the email says, oh, hang on, I'll read it to you exactly because I took a screenshot of it, so I'd be, Easy, it would be easy to find, and I wouldn't be in a bind. My poet didn't even know it. <laughs> uh, give me just a second guys I will find it oh and I sent another $130 to them today for some video footage of Tisha at the hospital there's a total of 12 clips and they was going to charge 480 bucks. But she told me that Leticia is only, there's Leticia is only singing on a couple of them. And I said, well, just give me the, <laughs> just give me the ones that she's in, please. I mean, if there's the other ones are nurses and everybody, I mean, I, obviously I don't want that. So We got that coming and some other stuff. A bunch of photos and whatnot. Well, what the hell? 
Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, and by the way, she does have video calls that started in March of 2020. Um, it says, please note the jail video phone calls are calculated at the body worn camera pricing at 32 bucks an hour. This is a processing hour. It takes us 20 minutes to process an hour of video. And she sent me, I can't remember now what all I got today, but, oh, I know what it was. Um, CCTV footage at the dollar store of Harley and Lena. So we'll be getting that footage, hospital footage, and there's a bunch of photos that I won't, I'm not even going to lie to you. I don't remember what they are. I don't remember what they are. <laughs> so forgive me. Uh, Dr. McDreamy says, yes, please tell us a total. I can, I, a total for what, um, McDreamy? If you're talking about the video calls, I have no idea. I have no idea. If you're talking about just the regular jail calls, it's like 6200 bucks, but we already have March, April, and May and a down payment on June. So I still owe 270 for June and every month after that. Yeah, yeah. No little chick, we got good things coming. So the other thing I wanted to ask him is do you want to continue on and order like we're doing? Or if you haven't already heard him, do you guys want to go with her prison calls? Oh, Maggie May. Julia says prison calls and shouts due to calls during the trial. Michelle says, I like an order. Linda says, I like in chronological order. AME says, chronological. Lori Marie says, we can raise it. I know we can to stay in order. I agree. Uh, I'm more about going in order. Um, but 
you know, the thing is, I don't even have a price yet for video calls. So, at, you know, you got to figure 10 video calls at 32 bucks each. That's 320 bucks, guys, for 10 video calls. Actually, a little more because they charge a credit card pro uh, processing fee. And you know, if you do that over from 2020 until 2023, I mean, uh, <laughs> I wish they would negotiate Atlanta, or I'm sorry, Shay. So I wanted to, you know, just keep you all in the loop because you're all the ones paying for them now. I'm, I mean, they're willing to get whatever we want, but, you know, I, like I said, I mean, 10 calls would be 320 bucks. But anyway, you guys, I don't know. Um, somebody said maybe you could put up, I can put up a poll. Um, Kathy or one of the mods, if you're able to do that, that would be awesome. Thank you, Michelle Furler, for the super sticker. Thank you. Uh-oh, my phone's barking. Um, we will get going on this interview. And again, it's Nicole Mobley. Um, this is on February 21st of 2020 and it's agent I don't know how he says his name but skis or whatever and her husband was at the beginning but like I said I cut a bunch of it out um And I did blur her face. So there's no need to, even though I know anybody can go find them on Facebook, but no need to blast her. They tried to set up after they did a, and you know, I spent some time building a rapport with her and getting the background of how everything went down between her and Tisha. Um, they tried to do a control call for between her and Tisha, but it didn't work out, but it's still, there's some good insight into Tisha's mindset, you know, all those years ago. So I'll shut up and we'll get started with it. I'll start it and we'll let it go for two hours. Thank you, Sherry Ann Fuller. Thank you for the super sticker. Here we go, guy. So you got charging. Thank you. you I'm going to move over. Not because I don't want to sit next to you, but this no, way I can, can actually see, see you. No, that, <laughs> I was going to ask you too, so that's great. Yeah, just because I can't actually see you when I'm sitting right there. Yeah, no problem. Um, so uh, just a couple questions starting out. You said we talked just briefly on the phone this morning, and I mm -hmm. want to get a little bit more information just to get some overall context. Okay. Um, when was, like, how did you and Leticia first meet? So, I met, you mean like actual in-person prior to this meet? 
Yeah, you, I, basically, I think the way you described it to me on the phone mm-hmm. is that you guys started talking in December or something. Yeah, like that. so um, we both live in Lorson Ranch, uh-huh. and I had put a post up. My niece was moving in, with, or had actually already been living with me. Okay. She's 16. Um, and we, I was struggling financially, but my niece's mom didn't give her any of her clothes, any of her anything. So mm-hmm. we needed a bed. We needed some clothes. Um, so I had put a thing up in the Lorson Ranch residence page mm-hmm. asking if anybody had any clothes or anything in her size that they would donate. Mm-hmm. And um, I had got a message from Harley Hunt, um, well, what I thought was Harley Hunt, um, saying, hey, I've got some clothes if you want. I can run them over to your house and some, you know, bathroom stuff, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and it was kind of weird, though, because it was Harley Hunt, but when the person showed up to the house, it looked nothing like Harley Hunt, and then I later now have figured out it was actually T. Okay. Um, that came to the house and dropped off the stuff. That was all normal. She was kind of weird, but that was all normal. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, how so? Why do, I well, mean, it got weird after, oh. um, because... Not knowing, so I didn't, I, I mean, I met her for two minutes, and then all of a sudden, I don't, I don't want to tell you how many days later, because I can't remember, I, it was within a day or two, or maybe even a week or something, she had asked me what school my niece goes to, and I said she went to Mesa, um, and asked me something about, I'm trying to remember, it's on my phone, mm-hmm. um, And she was using Harley's um, Facebook page, Mm -hmm. like Messenger, not her. Said something about she's a flight attendant part-time. She's a teacher and a flight attendant part-time, and she was going to be leaving town on these days, like whatever the days were, and she wanted to know if my niece would come over and basically somewhat house it. So I guess her daughter would have been there part of the time, so my niece would have been keeping her daughter company. Mm. But then when her daughter wasn't there, that my niece would be house-sitting. And I just thought it was weird, because, number one, her her daughter's 17. Mm -hmm. Why do you need somebody to babysit your 17-year-old? But I didn't know her. And Mm -hmm. she's asking me to basically let my niece go and live in her house (coughs) by herself. And she didn't have a job. I knew she didn't have a job. Well, she didn't have a job as a flight attendant. Sure. And I knew that when she asked me this. How'd you know that? Um, just because I looked at her profile and because I know people who know her. Gotcha. So I thought it was kind of weird. Uh huh. Um, and it caught me off guard that she was writing me from. I didn't know who Harley Hunt was. I didn't realize at that point that that was her daughter because I didn't know her daughter's name. That it was. I'm talking to a Harley Hunt, but then I'm meeting a T, or a Tisha, mm-hmm. and they look completely different. One is a teenager and another one's an adult. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of weird. So anyways, when they brought, when she brought the clothes the first time, it was my husband. I was there, but he's the one who actually communicated with her. And then the next day, nobody told me, they sent me any messages, nobody anything. All of a sudden I get a knock on the door and I go and open it. And she's standing at my door with three pairs of pants. And it is, she's just like, oh, I forgot to give you these. And I have something really important to talk to you about later, so just I'll message you when I get home. And then that's when she got into the whole asking about my niece watching her house. I so I mean, I I I don't know that I mean that's not really anything big or anything, sure. but that's just. And that was in December. Yeah. Okay. And that's when it was weird. <clears throat> and then I'll let you ask the next questions, but <laughs> no, that's fine. I'll tell you why everything happened this way. But I'll, I'm sure there's a certain process you want me to go through. So. No, not really. I mean, so maybe just walk through your interactions with her from December Well, let me tell you, I was very nervous. Um, I've been trying to get a hold of somebody since yesterday when the messages started, Mm -hmm. but I've been kind of scared about it for my own personal things, and you'll, when you read these, you'll see why. Um, And this is just me being 100% honest with you. I met her, I didn't meet her. We started talking initially, I was using a fake Facebook page. I was not using it to talk to her. I was not using it for any other reason other than so the day that Gannon went missing um being in Larson Ranch me and my husband as soon as we read the post that this kid was supposed to go to Jimmy's house and he didn't we were one of the first people out there and we were out there until three o'clock in the morning in the snow soaking wet looking for a kid in ditches and in case he got lost or got hurt or something and it was peculiar to me because she we were right by her house, and she had never left her house looking for her stepson. 
um, so I had made a post about, I, I said something about, I don't even think I said something like that, I don't think I said anything bad, but what's really weird is, I went to look up her profile the next day and I was blocked, mm. and in my mind, I looked at my husband and I said, I don't get it. I put something on there about you and me, we've been out here for six hours, soaking wet. My husband had to be to work. We got home two hours before he had to go to work. Um, why would you block me if you're looking, if I'm out there looking for your stepkid? So I didn't think that that was right. So I've had my own speculations just like everybody can I, else. Can I back you up? Go ahead. So that night when you went looking for Gannon, did you go over to T's house? Oh, did no. Did you meet with T? Oh, or no. Or have any interaction no, with her that night? not at all. Uh uh. No phone um, calls or messages or no. Stuff like um, that. I had posted some things on the. Re I don't think I posted direct. I I don't know this for sure. I might be wrong. She had done her post on Facebook about. Um. It posted a picture of Gannon, saying, and she had said, you know, my stepson was supposed to be on his way to Jimmy's house. Whatever the initial post was that day, uh -huh. I don't think I commented on that post. I think somebody else that shared it on the residence page in Lorson Ranch is the only one that I commented on. So I never actually sent anything to T. I never okay. commented on any of her stuff. Did you talk to Harley that night or anyone no. in that family? Okay. Um, I do know that I wrote, whatever I wrote, Harley did comment underneath it um, and said something like, thank you guys so much. Um, but it was no actual interaction or any kind of sure. communication or anything You didn't like go that. over to their house? And no, not at all. Okay. Um, I was in the field right by her house and my car was like four houses down from her house. Because the field that we were at where everybody was searching, there were so many cars lined up that uh, the only place left for me to park was on her street. But I, I didn't even know which house was her house at that point until after I was already parked like four or five houses down. Okay. Okay. Um, so she blocked me, which I thought was kind of, I actually got kind of upset about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, because at this point we're thinking it's a kid who either A, went to a friend's house and got lost. Um, or he's a runaway. So at this point, nothing is really out of sorts except right. for the fact that she blocked me mm -hmm. when I'm just trying to look for her kid. <clears throat> so I thought that was weird. Um, my husband, I think, did message her from his Facebook. And, and you'd have to look at his phone because I don't know what it said. And it wasn't anything rude. It was just, hey, we were trying to help you find... Uh, we were trying to help look for Gannon. I was just wondering if there's a reason why you blocked my wife. Mm -hmm. um, and this is before anything became an investigation or anything. So, I found it peculiar that she blocked me. So, I will tell you, I was on the path of believing that something went wrong. When everybody started putting their speculations out there, I'm starting to think stepmom's guilty. But then all of a sudden, I, with different things that were coming out, I completely, like, switched. I was like, you know what, there's a really good chance this woman's innocent. I... I don't know that she's guilty, and I really don't feel that she necessarily is. And there's a group out there called T Support Page or Support Group or something mm -hmm. um, that I wanted to be a part of. But because she had blocked me, I wouldn't be allowed into that group. I see. So I'm being honest with you. I I created a fake Facebook page. Um, actually, I had had it from before. Mm -hmm. Long. I I won't get into the whole story. My ex-husband has been avoiding my child support payments for like five years. Mm -hmm. So I initially created this page just to be able to see his uh, Facebook. So true. it's something I already Pretty had. Smart. I didn't create yeah. it just for this. Yeah. But I did use that to get into the support group. What's the username? Yeah. Um, I might be wrong. The reason I'm saying that is because I tried to do I, when I created it when I was doing this with my ex-husband trying to find oh. where it was because sure. I want my you know, child support. Um, <laughs> so I might have changed it, but when you guys go through that, you're going to be able to see it. I might be wrong. It's, um, so I did get into this group, and just little minor comments and stuff, not really trying to do anything or anything like that. And that is where T started messaging. Me and T started messaging back and forth. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, 100%, I was not messag messaging her to get any information. I didn't want her to tell me anything that was going on. I wanted to be supportive. Um, I was not trying to get, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a detective, I must use a cuss word, but I'm not a detective, I don't need secret info, I will let you know, my real profile, um, yeah, no, yeah. Brandon, which is Landon's brother, that was, has actually been, 
he just went back but he was down here mm -hmm. um I, me and Brandon are actually in communication as well. Mm -hmm. And I have never asked him for personal information either. I don't want to know anything about the case. Mm -hmm. That is not what I was aiming for. But conversation starts. And at one point, I don't remember, without having it in front of me, I don't remember if I had told her the truth about who I was at this point. I think I did. So I told her... FYI, I am not the person on the profile. And she goes, oh my God, who are you? And I was like, you know me, you've met me. And she's like, well, who are you? I said, I'll give you a hint. Because I didn't want to put my name on there. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't, she screenshots things and puts them in places that I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. I said, um, right around Christmas, you brought clothes over for my niece. She goes, oh my God, I know exactly who you are. She's like, you didn't believe me at the beginning. And I'm just like, well, I didn't say I didn't believe you, but whatever, who cares? Yeah. Um, everything's speculation at this point. Then she had asked me to download, or no, she asked me if I would meet her in person. She asked if I'd meet her for coffee. Um, and I was like, sure, I can meet you for, for coffee. But then I kind of got scared. Um, I didn't know that I, for all I know, I'm talking to somebody that's not her. And if I am talking to her, I don't know what, I don't know what's going on with this case. I don't know if she's guilty of something. I don't want to be seen with her. Um, that's scary to me. So I was like, kind of, I started beating around it, like trying to get out of it without actually saying no. And then she goes, you know what? Can we just talk in a private chat in a private message thing? And I was like, sure. And then she says, here, download this app. So I downloaded the app. Once I downloaded the app. What app is that? It's that text plus. Text plus app. I think I sent him a picture of it. Okay. It's what I was trying to show you guys out there. I think it's okay. called text plus mm -hmm. or something. Um, once we got into there, she wanted me to verify who I was. So she said, what is your real name? And I said, Nicole. Um, at one point, she did, a, she called me. Um, it was about a 30 second call. She just wanted to verify that I am who I am. But I also wanted to know that she was really T. Sure. Um, because... I didn't want to find out I'm talking to some 50 year old man who wants me to meet him in some random place right. like, yeah. you know um, because at some point I know she's going to try and meet me again like mm -hmm. she's going to bring up the whole let's meet up again we haven't met I keep saying again she's going to bring it up again I haven't actually met up with her I hope you know what I mean when I'm actually um, saying yeah, that yeah that makes sense um, but then <laughs> that's when she started she said well let me start off by telling you the truth about re what really happened and then she goes into this whole spiel about and it's really weird because when you read it, it's missing spots. Like, I don't know if it's the way she talks. I don't know. I It's very confusing to me. Mm -hmm. um, because she'll start saying something about this, but it, and then she'll skip ahead to something else, and I'm like, but that doesn't make sense. Like, what's in between? Mm -hmm. And things weren't adding up. Um, she had said that she had gotten home and there was a man in her house and that she's already told detectives this but when she calls cops over this is the story she had given everybody and she said that at one point she had said that she had brought the two girls and made them go upstairs while this guy was in the house and this guy had a hold of Gannon but then later on she talks about well the youngest daughter wasn't there she was on the school bus and one of the daughters came up to the door and came, went to go in the house, but she sent them out to the mailbox. So everything just started getting really, really weird. Like, mm -hmm. no, nothing was adding up. And honestly, I probably should have stopped at that point because I'm not a detective. I shouldn't be crying. But I kind of felt like she trusts me and she's opening mm -hmm. up to me. And right. We're missing a kid here. Mm -hmm. And she's starting to tell me things like about the couch. She sent me a picture of a couch that was burnt that explains why she said that in whatever she had said in the video, you know, that was all over the internet. Mm -hmm. But then she asked me for a favor, and it's weird because she says, I'm not asking you to do it, I'm asking if you know somebody who would do it. And then she turns around to, would you do it? And she sent me a picture of Gannon laying in a bed under a blanket. She tells me that this guy that was in her house um, was there because he wanted to take take Gannon, and she thinks that he wanted to take the little girl, too. Um, that, and this is where I'm really confused. She, I don't know if she, she said that she hit him, he hit her in the head, 
and she got knocked unconscious. But then... Who hit who? The guy that was in her house when she got there. So when she got home, there was a guy in her house that she doesn't know. Right. And and you guys, when you read it, you're going to see what I mean. I'm I'm very, I don't understand it. I'm very confused. And this is all memorializing. It's all in these messages. And none of it makes sense. And you'll notice that I start asking questions slowly because I don't want to push her away. Mm-hmm. But I slowly start asking these questions to fill in these gaps that she's giving me. Mm-hmm. But it just doesn't make any sense. Um, but the main part about that, and I, I could sit here and try and explain it to you, but it's too hard to you. I think once you guys read it, you'll mm-hmm. see what I'm talking about. Sure. She was asking me to, because there is proof of me posting that I was by her house at about 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I was still out searching. Um, and that was the night of the... That he came he was, missing. Okay. Yeah. She's saying that the cops were at her house. She didn't know the man was still in her house again, and they must have been hiding in a storage closet. When cops left, he apparently hit her in the head and took off of Gannon in a suitcase full of some of their stuff and Gannon's stuff. And he made Gannon wrap up in a blanket. So she sent me a picture of Gannon in his bed at one point with a blanket and said, this blanket is going to appear online sometime soon. Somebody's going to say something about this blanket missing from the house. Or she said it's already online. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, she wanted me to either call her her husband, Al, mm-hmm. and he would keep me anonymous other than to law enforcement or to call law enforcement. She was going to give me word for word detail what to tell you guys. Um, which I obviously haven't said yes, so we haven't gotten that far. Okay. But the bottom line is I'm supposed to tell you guys that when I was out searching, this blanket that somehow I see online or somebody posted somewhere so that I can recognize it, recognize Mm -hmm. it, I recognize that blanket from the night I was out searching. I do remember a guy carrying a suitcase and somebody next to him with this blanket on him coming out of her house. She wanted you to say that. Yeah. To, and to the police. Yeah. And well, or to tell her or husband to and to have him report it. Here's the thing though. She's not telling me to do that to save her. Mm-hmm. The way she explains it is she cannot get law enforcement to believe her that there was a guy in the house that took in. So she wants me to do that to get everybody all of law enforcement off of her. And to start looking for this guy that was in her house. And she even gave a description of a guy. What how did she describe? Hispanic between I think it was between five six and five seven. She said he has a tattoo like a teardrop on his face or maybe a marking, but she thinks it's a tattoo on his face. And like hundred and seventy five pounds. Um, and that he left with a suitcase and Gannon wrapped in a blanket. And that he had said something, and you guys are, I, this is why I, I got scared, <laughs> because of some of the things that I say in this. Mm-hmm. Um, so, she said that he had mentioned some. basically he made it, he made Gannon think that he knows somebody that Gannon knows. He said that he's friends with Uncle Matt, and T's like, but we don't have an Uncle Matt on our side of the family. And I was like, okay, well, what about on Mom's side of the family? Maybe they have a friend that they call Uncle Matt. So I do my stripping and find a guy named Matt that they do call Uncle Matt. Mm. And I go through his friends list Mm. and find everybody who has a tattoo on their face. And I send it to stepmom, knowing that none of these guys are who it's supposed to be. Mm. None of these guys are the guilty person, she's saying. But just, I send them to her because I want her to feel like I'm still... I was really terrified that if I told her flat out no or she knew I was coming to you guys. I don't know what this lady's capable of, mm. or if she's got people, I don't know. So I wanted to keep going until I could talk to, <laughs> talk to you guys and know sure. that I'm safe. Um, you're also gonna see in there that I didn't tell her no to the reporting. Mm. I actually made it sound like I was getting close to doing it. I said, oh, I have a post on Facebook that shows that I was right by your house around that time. Mm. Um, and then at one point, just so you guys know right now they have her phone and they're 
doing a dump with it right now. They're waiting on it to finish up. So that's why she's telling them what they're going to find. She goes, so will you help me? And I said something about, my husband told me how to word it. Um, something about this could be a federal charge or something if I get caught. I don't remember how I worded it. Um, and I think her reply was, well, I understand if you're, you know, worried. I just really need this to happen because... I need them to start looking for this guy. Stop being on my back because they're looking for they're looking in the wrong places. They need to find the guy who took Gannon. So then I kind of went back into it again. Mm -hmm. I never officially said yes, so we haven't gotten to the the point of her giving me the story. The next step, basically, if you guys wouldn't contact me, was going to be we can't do this over the phone. But I don't want to meet her because mm -hmm. I'm too scared to. But she wants to meet me and give me this whole rundown of everything that's missing out of the messages and she wants to give me some elaboration and whatever I'm supposed to be calling you guys with or calling out with. When's the last time you had correspondence with uh, Probably about an hour. Okay. Half, two hours ago. Okay, so it's... It's continuing. Yeah. Okay. Um, my thing is, is I got very scared of talking to anybody. Um, there's people in the neighborhood uh, like Jane, I can't remember her last name, She's in contact with Landon and all of them. Um, I did ask her, hey, do you know how I can get in touch with law enforcement? She's been, a lot of people, she's been asking me what is going on, but I've been too afraid to put any up, message anybody about it mm -hmm. because she's in contact with Landon and all of them. And all it would have taken is for Landon and, and Al to find this out and then say something to T and the T knows that I'm talking and I don't know what's going on in this investigation. I don't want it to get out. I've had a news lady contact me asking. I can get all of this information to the right person for you if you tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm not an idiot. I'm not right. going to tell somebody in the news. Yeah. You're not going to get my. Yeah, you're going to go put it all over the. You're going to go put it all over the news, and then I don't know what's going to happen from there. Mm -hmm. Um, could, I gave T my word that she could trust me. Sure. So, so I know that you speaking of trust, you you talked a little bit about that where on this the. Text Plus app. Yeah. Um, where you had a conversation with her to prove to basically identify your, each other. Yes. Yourselves to each other. Yeah. Um, and so was it over the? Like, yeah, was it, it was. Like, it was like a thirty-second over the phone kind of conversation. Like I wanted to hear her voice. She mm -hmm. wanted to hear my voice, kind of. And it's through the text app. Okay. Um, and then <coughs> she did want to meet me for coffee. Mm -hmm. Um. And I was kind of scared, and I was like, how do I know that this is really tea? Mm -hmm. So that's when she started sending me, and you'll see some of the pictures and stuff, of things that I don't think anybody else would have had. Um, but like what? She knew my name, and that's how I know that it's her. Okay. Um, because I never told her my name at first. Mm -hmm. um, I said, I'm the one that you gave those clothes to. Mm -hmm. And she jumped right into the knee story. And that was, was that on Facebook or was that on... It was on the Facebook before she told me to do the text app. Okay. But remember, my Facebook, it's a fake Facebook. Mm-hmm. So it has no ties to me at all. And how do you know it was her through Facebook? Did Like, were you, was it her That's how I page? tested it. It is her page. Okay. But there's other people I've heard setting up fake pages. And that's why... So that's how I tested it. Mm -hmm. When she asked me who I really was, instead of telling her who I was, I didn't want to give her my name. I wanted to see if it was her. So I said, you gave my niece clothes um, around Christmas and waited for her kind of responses, and she knew exactly who I was. She knew my She's like, oh, yeah, I met you and your husband mm -hmm. and your niece. And the way that she goes into it, mm -hmm. nobody else would have known that. Okay. Unless they hacked her account, mm -hmm. nobody else is going to know that. And it's really peculiar to me because she's asked me to meet her a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it could be somebody other than her. Um, I mean, somebody else other than her could ask me to try and meet her, mm -hmm. meet mm -hmm. them, or whatever the case is, but the way that she responded to that, nobody else is going to know anything about that. Mm -hmm. So it had to. And then when I had her on the phone, there's no denying that her, she speaks different. Yeah. Um, like, her words are okay. different. I don't know if any if you guys have actually talked to her, but I'm sure you have. Her words are different, like mm -hmm. the way she talks, um, and the accent. So... Mm -hmm. I kind of did little things to see, <coughs> make sure that it was validated that it was her. I almost got to the point of meeting up with her, mm -hmm. but 
honestly, I'm not going to lie to you, if I couldn't figure out how to actually get law enforcement to call me, I was going to meet her. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because she trusts me, Mm -hmm. and I don't know how much she's willing to give me with that trust. What did she say about this text app when she asked you? Did she say anything about it or just, hey, use this thing? No, she said, let's talk on a private text app. Or, I don't know how she worded it. It was something about, will you talk to me in a private chat or something? She told me what to download. Um, and she was, she said, download text, whatever it's called. Text she said plus. it's the green app. Okay. So that's how we, that's how we did that. And the voice you heard when you talked to her on that, right at the beginning, did you recognize her? It's a hundred percent her. And she's tried to call me three times today. Okay. So if you guys wanted validation, I can call her. Okay. And she will answer. As long as she's not busy, she'll answer. Okay. I mean, I don't know what the hell I'd say to her because mm-hmm. I've tried to avoid all of her calls because I get really shaky and I don't know what I'm supposed to say when she calls me. But sure. if you want me to, I can. Okay. <laughs> can you call her on a cell phone call? Do you know her cell phone number? Or no, it, it has to be through the app. To she won't talk to me off the app because she thinks everything else is being, which I'm sure it is, but everything else is mm-hmm. being watched. Um, I'd even meet with her, but mm-hmm. uh, I just get scared doing that by myself. <laughs> what scares you about that? I don't know where this case is going. I don't know where Gannon is. I don't know if she's guilty or not. Um, I don't know what she's capable of. I don't know if... it. Let's say she's guilty. I don't know that she did it alone. Hmm. Or who else could be involved. I don't know. Guilty of, of what? I'm just curious, like... You're saying guilty, but I'm just curious what it is that you... I don't... What you're scared of as far as her being guilty of something. And I don't... I'm I'm the hopeful one. If you read all my posts on Facebook, I'm the hopeful one that Gannon's alive. But if he's not. And if she's guilty of it. I see. Or if he is alive, but she had somebody do something with him. Mm-hmm. I don't... I have no idea. Yeah. But... Not just that, but this is a very active investigation and I felt me randomly meeting up with her without having talking to you guys or somebody now I'm like if she's being watched or whatever the case is then they're like who's this girl? Now we gotta look into her and why is she around all of a sudden? Like does that make sense? Absolutely. So I'm a very paranoid person I have been my entire life. <laughs> so, I don't want, I didn't want to put myself in a position. And I will tell you right now, I have been terrified about ever knowing what she told me yesterday and her asking me to do that. So scared that I'm like telling my husband the FBI is watching my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I can assure you we're not. I, yeah. <laughs> and to the point that I had one person that I asked to reach out to law enforcement because I knew she had a way to Mm -hmm. try and get somebody to meet faster um, because I was too scared that if it took too long and you guys had to bring T in here for some reason and got a hold of her phone and saw this, it looks like I just agreed to make false reports against her and I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to go to jail. I'm really not doing it. Right. Does that make sense? Like, I just got really scared. Like, I don't know where this boy is. I want him found. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, this obviously, I'm not helping you with a location because I can't. I don't know anything. Sure. But I just felt like this was, it's really weird for, she offered me as much money as I want or whatever I want. Can you tell me more this. about that conversation? That part of the conversation? Um, so it's, <clears throat> I'm just trying to replay it all through my head. She had started off by saying something like, I need help. Or I need a that part of the conversation? Um, so it's... <clears throat> I'm just trying to replay it all through my head. She had started off by saying something like, I need help. Or I need a favor. And in return, I can help you too. And then she goes, now before you think this is something really bad, hear me out. And I wrote back with, of course I don't think you would ask me to do something bad. 
So then she goes into the explaining the story of her version of what happened that night. Sent me a picture of a burn on a couch, explaining all of that. Um, and then she goes, I'm not necessarily asking you, or wait, she said, I'm not asking you to do it. I'm asking you if you know somebody who would. I think that's how she worded it. Um, but I need someone to say that they saw this guy and Gannon wrapped in a blanket, well, in this blanket, mm -hmm. wrapped around someone and a suitcase out by my house that night. And she told me around 1 a.m. She said, because the cops left um, around like one or something. Mm -hmm. She's like, and I'm pretty sure he was still in the house while the cops were there. So I, and it, she kind of goes into a little bit of detail. She hasn't given me all the detail because she wants me to tell her yes before sure. she gives me everything to say. Okay. But she said, I am willing to give my life or pay or give anything that you that anybody wants. She said, after all of this, I'm going to be able to sue for defamation, something and something. Mm -hmm. um, she was like, so anything, any amount or anything that's wanted. And I thought it was really weird because before all that, she's like, I know you were struggling around Christmas. How are you guys doing now? And I'm just having a normal conversation with her. I'm like, yeah, my house flooded. Actually, on one of the nights we were out doing the search. Oh, no. Sent her pictures of the holes in my house and all of that. And I think that's when she was like, ding, ding, ding. Okay, I can mm. offer this girl money. Mm. So, at first she said, I'm not asking you. I'm asking if you know somebody else who could. But then, as it goes on, she's like, can you help? Can you help? And then, shows me a picture of this blanket. And tells me a time frame. And she's like, but I would tell you word for word what to say. And she said, it's up to you. You could either call Al and give him the info. He'll keep you anonymous with everybody except for law enforcement. Or you can contact law enforcement. But yeah. it kind of goes into a little bit of details. And you'll notice it kind of, the conversations really jump. Because yeah. um, I kind of tried to avoid it at certain points, like kind of going around it. Yeah. Um, I think the only reason she's still talking to me is because I haven't told her officially no. And she's hoping I'm going to come back with a yes or something. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But she's still talking to me. And now she's being, now she's just like normal. Oh, I'm so sorry you were sick. And hey, how's your day? And today she asked me, are they still searching out there? Mm. And I was like, I don't know. I'm in Denver. And then she wrote me and she goes, it looks like they, um, what was the word in the news? Or they, they used on the thing. They discontinued the searches or whatever word they used for that. With a little sad face next to it or something. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. So, yeah. so when did she, you, when did she specifically ask you to do, to basically make up this story? Yesterday. Yesterday. And you called, you called Wait, a tip line right after let that? Let me think, hold on. Was it yesterday? I'm pretty positive it was yesterday. My days are getting jumbled because here's what happened. This happened and I called the police station mm. and that guy didn't want to help me <laughs> so then I called the tip line and found out it was just a recording mm -hmm. I didn't know how to leave that in a voice <laughs> I so then I sent an email that failed <sighs> and then I asked a few people in the neighborhood that are I know that have been involved with the family I didn't give them details but I asked them how do I get a hold of somebody? And this one girl, Heather, gave me a number for a detective. Okay. Um, I tried to call that number and got a voicemail. Mm -hmm. um, so then Heather actually called and left a voicemail for me, and I left a voicemail on the tip line at around like 2 o'clock yesterday. Okay. I've tried a hundred <clears throat> different ways to get a hold of somebody. Okay. I, did, I, even try, I almost went into the police station, mm -hmm. but when I called the police number, that guy told me, I said, look, it's really important that I talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. I said, I know you guys have a tip line, Sorry to interrupt, but I knew there was something I forgot to tell you guys. Um, yesterday, I got Chance Hunt's um, police report and autopsy report. Um, and I put it in Discord. If you guys want to check that out, um, 
just letting you know because I forgot to say it at the beginning. I don't know how to leave this in a voicemail. I'm not speculating. I really need to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't know what to tell you. You have to call the tip line and they don't check that after five o'clock. I was like, well, that doesn't really help me any. So it had to have been the day before yesterday. Okay. And the reason I'm saying that is because I remember it was happening closer to nighttime. Mm -hmm. I'm really confused on my time. Okay. Just because this has been eating away at me. Mm -hmm. It, yeah, it had to have been the day before yesterday, and I have been trying everything I can to figure out who to talk to. And I was really scared to talk to just about anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I knew I am in contact with a family member on, uh, you know, land inside, mm -hmm. and I knew I could have done that. But to me, they get that info, then it, it gets back to T. It doesn't go through the proper chain. Mm -hmm. I have a news lady who offered to help, and obviously I wasn't giving her the information. Mm -hmm. So I lost it like I couldn't even sleep when were you contacted by the news lady oh she's been talking to me for like for a while a couple of weeks okay I don't know why she sent me a friend request I never accepted it I think it's because she had saw me I was on one of the news things mm -hmm. at one point they came up and um for Fox 21 mm -hmm. they had asked me you know as a mother how does this make you feel blah 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 just regular stuff mm -hmm. and since then so um and I, I might have asked her first. I think I had asked her, hey, do you guys have any contact information for directly for a detective? And then she tries that whole slide. Well, if you tell me what's going on, I'll get it to the right person. And I said, I can't do that, sorry. Because, you know, yeah. they're good at leaking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of worried because I, I feel like that asshole. Like, I don't know that he's guilty of anything. And I gave her my word she could trust me. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that's how, I thought we were just going to have a normal conversation and I was going to be a supporter. Um, I mean, as, as a friend or whatever. And I'm also, like, I'm on Landon's side. It's, I mean, I mm -hmm. talked with Landon a couple times, too. I didn't think it was going to turn into this. Mm -hmm. So I'm that kind of person. Usually, if I give you my word, my word's my word. Mm -hmm. But I just felt like being offered as much money as I want or whatever I want for me to do it or to find somebody else to do it and her sending me a picture of the blanket and stuff that was too much yeah. I just felt something was off at that point I mean and whether it's true that she's just trying to get everybody's attention to actually look for this blanket in this guy or whatever I don't know mm -hmm. but I just felt if I didn't report it then oh, I, was doing, the right thing. I was doing something wrong yeah so and I'm sorry, I know I'm not a detective, I should not keep prying with her, but when it when she keeps talking, it's kind of hard to not. Sure. You know what I mean. Yeah. So. Who else knows you came in today? My husband. Just your husband. Um, who knows I came in, or that I've talked to someone. Um, there's a girl named Jane. Mary, Jane? Mary Jane. Jane. Mary. Mary. Jane. Um, because she is She's one that runs a lot of our groups in the neighborhood and stuff. And she is the one who does the, like, she knows the family and she knows all the, a lot of the contact numbers. She does not know why, though. She doesn't know what, she doesn't know everything I told you guys. But she does know that I can't, that, I think she actually had a cop at her house yesterday that she had asked them to specifically look for my message on the tip line. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. But I haven't actually given the detail, like. Here's what's in so. Mm -hmm. You know. I just feel like I'm going to get in trouble for everything I do. <laughs> you shouldn't. Like I said, you absolutely did the right thing. I know. I just feel like I kind of did pry at, at a mm -hmm. point. And I did lie about who I was, I mean, with my Facebook account. So I think that's kind of what scared me with you guys was, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't feel like I was doing anything wrong necessarily. I wasn't, I told her who I was. I wasn't trying to portray anybody else. Um, I just felt like I didn't tell her no I wouldn't make this report mm -hmm. and I was like that's going to make me look really bad she would make, to be curious everyone is so I wouldn't beat yourself up for okay. sort, of, sort of doing that I just thought it was weird that she's willing to meet up with me and that she's willing to talk to me so much so I didn't want to shut her up at that point yeah. I mean, speaking of that did you have I mean so you've known her I don't know how long since, since December you said yeah but roughly? I've not have you had any face, sort of face, other than her bringing that stuff over, 
Have you been to her house? Have you had dinner with her, gone out, that kind of thing? Nothing, nothing like that? Yeah. And she, like I said, it was weird. Like, she clicked with me right away. After me and her talking for a whole five minutes at my house, she uh -huh. wanted my niece to come and stay at her house for a week. And she offered uh -huh. to pay her for it. And it, it was like one of those... When I met her, she acted like we've known each other forever. Mm. So, and I am, I kind of am one of those people, like, I'm, I'm very well known in my neighborhood. I run a lot of the pages. I run the Lorson Ranch resi or, uh, dining in page. I run the auction page. So, I've only lived in Lorson Ranch since, since October, and you'd be surprised at how many people, I mean, there's people that I haven't met face to face, and they're what, they tell me they love me all the time, <laughs> and I'm like their best friend. So, I'm one of those people that... I just click. Yeah, no, I So, I thought it was kind of weird, too, that she would ask me this favor, but... That shows a, a sort of a high degree of trust. Mm -hmm. I just Clearly. don't get it, though, because he doesn't really know me. So, that's kind of weird. Yes, it's odd, isn't it? That's why it was weird to me. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the fact that you're asking me to do something like that to begin with is weird to me. But, it was also weird when she wanted my niece to go live in her house for a week when I didn't know her. So... And I obviously didn't do it because my niece is 16 and I don't know this lady. But I just thought it was all kind of, kind of weird. Yeah. Okay. So you said earlier you would be willing to make a phone call or, mm -hmm. or you know, see if we can hear a voice on the other side of the phone. Um, I think what I'm going to do is check and see if our tech guy is done. And, and uh, I think maybe we could explore that next if you're willing to do that for us. I will. So, and then maybe we can even talk about next step as, steps as far as your conversation with her and, and see you know, maybe what she comes back with as far as like we just need to kind of come up with a like what am I going to say absolutely yeah, um, we, would, we, would, we would prepare you to, okay. to deal with it and I'm a, I, get, I get very nervous under certain you can tell my face gets red every once in a while mm -hmm. luckily I'm not stuttering a lot with you guys you should have seen me when they did that news segment and all they did was ask me about being a mom and chip. Um, I get very nervous, so I kind of need that, like, once you guys reassure me of what I'm saying and everything, I'll be good. But do you mind if before we do that, can I step outside, have a cigarette, and calm down? I don't even care if one of you comes with me. Yeah. I just need a minute yeah. to kind of talk. We can definitely do that. I just don't want to yeah. be completely nervous. No. I've avoided all of her calls just because I haven't known what to say to her when she calls me. <laughs> yeah. Do you need anything else? we got snacks, water, oh, no. soda, whatever. I just, I don't want to feel, I just need to be able to kind of not to shake it off yeah but yeah i definitely i don't mind doing that at all okay um and also if we're going to be a while i want to let my husband know because i do have two kids that i need him to go pick up from school. we can make that arrangement real quick too that'd be perfect um give, give us just a second to step out yes yeah, that's and, fine and chat with our partners and, and fine. make these arrangements for you guys okay and then we'll, we'll get this ball rolling awesome thank you Thanks thank you much. I bought that on the way here, so. Okay, so I got a charger. Awesome. Yeah, so that's the <coughs> cable. So we can do this, you'll have it when we're done. So. <laughs> I bought that on the way here, so. No, I'm just kidding. Fancy, <laughs> Only five dollars. I just needed a charger. Doesn't work as good as those speed ones, though. How you look? Yeah, those are nice. Those. Yeah, I used my dad's yesterday because obviously I don't have my speed charger anymore. Uh -huh. My kids take those, but I used my dad's yesterday, and I swear it was at 20% within like three minutes, oh, well. maybe five minutes. Cool. Those ones are ridiculous. Yeah, they work very fast. Okay. 
I probably need to look it up. Do you have to, do you have a time you need to be? No. Okay. My husband's calling my mom and getting help with the kids, getting picked up and all that, so. Alright, so I'm going to start with the message. Let me see. Does it matter what I say right now? Can I just tell you after I type it? Because I'm a lot better if I just do it on a whim. Uh, anything. Yeah, we usually... <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm like, that's not going to work. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot to tell you that. But... That's funny. reason um, we can't hear the conversation uh -huh. uh, and you're talking we may put this in your ear okay which side do you talk on <laughs> either one okay so it the phone would have to go up against this okay and you wouldn't do anything else you do with soft talk we would so like what part of the phone just just so what we do is i just put that in here like this and you just put and it just, hold just like you're holding a regular okay. conversation okay we may not use this but if it's okay if it seems like it's it's hard to hear where I just didn't want sense. to freak you out oh no you're good okay so the one I'm just sending her right now because I just want it to sound nonchalant normal um I just can't win they just said it is my engine in my van all I can do is drop it for like two hundred dollars I'm totally screwed I just want to make sure she's going to write me back really quick okay good as long this as she writes me back and it's active then. The phone. So okay this goes in your ear mm -hmm. otherwise you don't hear this is the mic gotcha. <laughs> okay I've done it before uh -huh. so. all right it just has no connection, but I can't, so I can't tell if it's, I mean, it looks like it's sent. Okay. I think maybe if I close out of the app and go back into it now that I turned off airplane mode. Okay. And if you, if it helps, you can look. Oh, I think it might be good. Okay. Okay. We're good. I was going to say, I might have to ask you for your Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say, we have a public Wi-Fi. Oh, that's cool. So if cool. that helps, you can connect to that now while <coughs> you're waiting. Normally she writes me back right away, but sometimes she will go a little bit without. So I'm hoping. I'm gonna wait a couple minutes, and if she doesn't write back on that, she know if you you'll pay attention. I mean, if you'll look. Anytime she doesn't write me back right away, I always automatically send her another message, like mm -hmm. within a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't write back right away, I'm gonna probably go right into the. Mm -hmm. So I think I really need to talk. I could use help now. Okay. Just to get her to. Yeah be a little more active in the for responding. Sure. We don't want to stay here for six hours. I right. will, but yeah. it'd be easier if we don't have to. For sure. <laughs> Just the way I can usually get her to talk. The thing that's weird about this app, I don't think it actually ever gives me a noise for a notification. Uh -huh. So I always have to, either something will pull up on the top or I just have to keep staring at it or keep mm -hmm. opening it. Or mm -hmm. So guys, how about that weather? Yeah. <laughs> Cold as usual. Yeah. Right? So to me, can I tell you what I find weird? And you don't have to comment on it or anything, but her name is Barbie Girl. So the only reason I'm telling you that I think this is weird is because if she only sets us up to talk to people now since things have happened, your stepson's missing and you call yourself Barbie Girl, or that means she's had this ad for a long time. Just saying. Mm -hmm. It's a standard starting conversation. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I really am one of those people that I look into everything. It's so stupid. I'm going to get about one more minute and then I'm going to do it because I usually, that's 
just based off my history, that's about how long yeah, it would take. This should all go about how you're comfortable speaking with her. Okay. Yeah, we know. We, I can't speak for him, but I get paid by the hour, so. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, as long as you want to take, we're good. Right. So, but yeah, we're here however long it takes. You know, we've got time. So. So I'm just letting her know I can't go without a second car. So I think it's time that we we actually talk about what she asked me. I could really use some help more than ever now. And then if she writes me back, which she will hopefully soon, mm -hmm. then I'm going to say, is there any way I can call you? And then we'll just kind of... I don't know if you guys want me telling you every time I send a message. But no, 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 <laughs> no, definitely. And I would just say, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you. Most of the time she's good at writing back right away, unless she comes back, you know, like an hour later and is like, hey, sorry, I was doing blah, blah, blah. So. They have a saying for that. I can't think of it. Hmm. When you stare at something, waiting for something to happen, but there's a saying for it. It's like staring at, I can't think of it. Excuse me. <laughs> I know you guys have to know what I'm talking about, though. There really is a saying for that. <laughs> what is it? Like, staring at... Watching grass grow. Maybe. It's something like dry. that. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you don't stare at it, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. This will be that one time she takes forever. And actually, I'm going to look and see if she's active on Facebook because that'll let me know that she's by her phone. Oh, so it's Sepler is my last name. Oh, okay. I knew it was something that started with an S. It's not really showing if she's active on it either. So. So would it be unusual for you, like, if this went, if she did it at midnight, would that be unusual for you not to respond to that? You know what I mean? During the night, or how, how does your correspondence do? Not really. I mean, we t the text messages have happened at so many random times in the middle, like, um, early morning, mm -hmm. afternoon, late at night. There's only been a few, there's been a few times, okay, so... If I knew I wasn't going to be able to respond to her soon, I didn't want her to think that I was, like at the beginning of this, right after she asked that question, that I was talking to somebody else or avoiding her or something. So I would make up an excuse, like, hey, I'm about to help my dad with something, so if I don't respond, this is why. But with her, sometimes she'll go like an hour and not respond, and then she'll tell me, hey, sorry, I was whatever. But it's all very random like okay. if i message her at 11 30 at night 12 o'clock at night if she's awake she'll write me right back she doesn't think oh. so it's just whenever i think of something to say to her i say it yeah so real quick before i forget it's probably on your phone but what's your username for text plus i don't have a username oh. mine is a <clears throat> phone number and i can give that to you okay <clears throat> It is. Okay. If she wants to I meet, haven't set up a name on it. If she wants to meet, would you be comfortable with that? Obviously, yeah. we would be 
around. Like I said, I, I wanted to meet up with her before, but I got scared okay. doing it. She may myself, suggest so. that, and if she does, that's it's fine with us, and we would yeah we would be there for you. I'd have no problem with that as long as, like I said, I'm, it's not just me. I mean, obviously it'd be just me, but you know what I mean. I you guys know where I am. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. <coughs> When's the last time she talked about getting together? Um, it was the first. It was before we got the app. So that would have been... And she's talked... She kind of hinted towards it again yesterday. Mm. But the one time she actually full on said, Hey, can we meet for coffee? Which to me was kind of weird. Like, why would we meet in a public place? But I, I'm assuming she's probably got certain places she goes. Mm. Um, it was... Here's the problem with using two different accounts on one phone for Facebook. <laughs> Every time you try to go into Messenger, it wants you to put, go into the other Messenger. Mm -hmm. And then it tells you it's expired, please log in, it, it goes. Social media. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta love it. And I'm not usually that big of a social media person, but through this, I kind of have been. Yeah, see, I had sent her pictures of my house flooding and stuff. Okay. So that's when she was like, oh, you guys have to pay for that yourself. Mm -hmm. Hence the money situation. She had asked about coffee. There was something else I just saw that I wanted to tell you to, but I'll tell you that. Because I forgot to tell you about it earlier. I don't know, my messenger doesn't seem to be wanting to let me open beyond, like, mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe it is, maybe I should log into that Wi-Fi, because I think this app runs off of it, and it's not letting me go back into messages. It's really fun. APC guest? Uh, public. Public. And then you'll have to, it'll direct you to a page and you'll just have to uh, agree. There you go. That might make it work better. Okay. Because I have Sprint. For some reason, Sprint, at least with my phone, doesn't work like anywhere. Mm. So, while I'm looking for that, I know you guys are probably going to go through all these messages. I mean, I don't know if you guys personally are or not, but mm -hmm. um, I had said something about people saying that there's another part to that video, the truck video. Um, and I said, and it's, I was like, I can't believe people are saying <coughs> that they think it was you loading a shovel and something else into your car. Just because I was trying to, you know, I'm totally on your side. Um, and she said, Oh, that must have just been me cleaning out Albert's truck. He had crap in it. Wood and trash and other things. And just the way she had said it was really weird. Um, can I answer this just in case? I don't yeah. know if it could be. Hello? Uh, you gotta call Dad. I gotta go. Okay, bye. It was a number I didn't know, so no I wasn't problem. sure. <laughs> um, I was going somewhere with that, but I don't remember now. So I'm just going to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> I almost wonder if I should just try and call her. Because I've called her a couple times. Okay. And if she doesn't answer, she'll write me right back mm -hmm. sometimes. So I'm just going to try and call her. Only thing is, is 
Let me call my husband from this app. I've never done speakerphone on it, and I want to make sure there is a speakerphone. Okay. Here's another crappy thing about this thing is you have to watch ads to use this stupid app. How do I get out of this? Let me call him to make sure I know how to use a speaker on this. Because this is weird. Okay. Do you have to pay to make a call on this? Because she's called me. Hmm. I wonder if she pays. You've never returned the call? You never called her? I've called her, like, on accident and then hung up. Like, I've never, on this app, I've never actually mm -hmm. talked to her. But do you see this? Like, mm -hmm. I'm hitting call, mm -hmm. and then it's going to this. Your credit balance and zero credit. So mm -hmm. I wonder if I'm going to have to make her call me. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. yeah, just, can you call me? Oh, but I'm also calling a regular phone number. I'm not calling. I'm going to just try and call her on it. If I give you this crazy look, that means that I need you to give me that thing because the speaker's not working and it's actually ringing. That's fair. Because <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to find out. Get ready. Dialed her before and shortly after she wrote me right back, so I'm hoping that's what's going to happen here. Okay. Yeah, we'll at least we know the speaker works. Yeah. <laughs> like, at least we know that part works now. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'll get so wrapped in the game, I won't even notice that she does message. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't play Candy Crush, but when I play my games on my phone, I'm really into them. I swear this is outside furniture. Uh, it might be. I really feel like it's that outside wicker. It's pretty comfortable, though, for what it is. It is. It's really nice. Somebody left a... Present in there. No. I took you wrong. They that said it was for you. Huh? That wasn't you. No. I don't need to. Your husband? Um, actually, I was told they left it for you because it says, why not true love? <laughs> Just kidding, not for you. <laughs> How long ago did you install that app? Or I know you were starting to talk about that. Um. I installed it. She messaged me and told me to install it. It was Wednesday. Okay. She told me to download text plus it's green. Mm. Which is weird because right before this is when she should have asked me for coffee. Mm. So it was this week that she asked you for coffee? Yeah, day before okay. yesterday.
here it is, when she had asked me, she said, well, once, well, since I know you, oh, so, since I know who you are, I wanted to see if I could meet with you. Maybe she didn't say coffee, maybe that was in my head. Mm. I swore she said coffee. But it says, well, since I know who you are, I wanted to see if I could meet you. Nothing bad, I just hate putting things on social media. Hmm. And we talked about my house a little bit, and then that's when she said, um, she said something. Do you have a way to talk on a private app? And I said, I can download one. And she said, download text plus. It's green. I downloaded it and then told her my number on it. And then stopped talking on Facebook from there. Hmm. And it's weird because I'm kind of a tech geek. So I know a lot about, like, these different apps and things. Mm -hmm. And this is one I had never heard of. And I usually <coughs> know those things. Not me. Yeah, I'm a nerd. I kind of hate being one, though, because mm. everybody calls me for everything. <laughs> hey, my computer's doing this. Can you fix it over the phone somehow? I'm like, four hours later, and when it's somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, and you're like, do you see the thing that looks like, no, I don't see it. I t I'm telling you, it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> it comes a pain in the butt. Well, she will write us eventually. I don't know when, but sometime. Yeah. That's fine. And I sent her these pictures of these... Remember I told you about the guys with the tattoos on the face mm -hmm. from the guy that Uncle Matt? And she told me, one of them looks just like him, only not as dark. You guys are going to see all this. I had a feeling this was going to be that one time, or one of those times. She's like, three hours late. Hey, this. You know, I was sleeping. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Sorry, my life. <clears throat> so I think it's weird that she was writing me from Carly's account. Like at the very beginning of this. Like before Gang mm. went missing and stuff. Do you ever ask about that? Mm -mm. Mm. I wanted to really bad. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't make any sense why. Especially when she was asking me to have my niece go and stay over there. I'm like, mm. I don't even know who you really are. You want my niece to go stay at your house. Mm. You have like no life right now. Why are you not ready to It's kind of a bad time. I wonder, I'm going to ask if you, do you guys know any of, like, the news people? I know. I'm just really curious, because this news lady who I told you guys writes me all the time, I don't think she actually does the news. I think she's, like, somebody important with the news or something. She's like, I can't get my Facebook to work, though. The one thing I caution you about when when you go from leave here, I know. Oh no! Don't, I, don't tell anybody. No. And no. your husband as well. I mean, eat family members because I totally people know it. it. Yep. You know. And that's why when you ask my husband if he knows anything, mm -hmm. 
very little bit have, have I even talked to him with this. Mm-hmm. Just because, well, number one, he doesn't know how to listen because he's me. But that's besides the point. Um, it's, I've been, I was really scared with this information. Like, mm-hmm. if I told the wrong person before I talked to somebody, it was going to end up on social media. Mm-hmm. And then I would be looked into, and with me almost agreeing to do this for her, I'm like, oh my god, I look so guilty right now of doing something. So I, I totally get it. And the way social media is right now, it's really bad. This lady's name is Courtney Ann. And it's funny, because she wrote me and she's like, um, what tip do you have? Is it about Gannon? I was like, uh, I can't give you that information. She's like, did you call the sheriff's office? And I was like, I did. I can't give you any information. She says, well, if you want me to pass that info on, I can. Just let me know. Because hmm. I'm really that stupid. Hmm. I am blonde, but it's fake. So, the things that they do, ever since that one thing <clears throat> got released by that one news station, I'm just like, how long have you been, like, a detective in Colorado? Mm, about Actually, about five months. Really? Well, I've been a deputy for six years, but I've just I just came to this division about five months ago. I wonder if you might know about you might have heard about it. I don't know. Um, were you ever familiar? It's a cold case now with the Bikima El Shani case. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. That's how you would. From is it from the Springs? Yeah, and it was, was it? all over the news. Um, it was like seven or eight years ago. So. Uh, her family called to do a well check on her Um, and as soon as cops pulled into the apartment complex they heard a gunshot and they go into her apartment and her fiance shot himself in the head and (coughs) we did a massive search party for weeks Mm -hmm. never found her body they found evidence of where he went with her and everything Mm -hmm. else but never found her body but she's a cold case here Mm -hmm. and when that was going on she was one of my best friends Mm. Yeah. When that was going on, the news would ask us questions, like, when, just nonchalantly while we were out there doing our doing the search and everything. And next thing you know, they were twisting our stories all over. And, like, ever since then, I'm just not a news person. I don't, I don't trust anybody. I don't trust social media. I don't trust anything. Mm-hmm. I just don't. Policy. Yeah. Especially something like this, when there's a missing kid I don't that's why I never went and met with her because I'm like I don't know what's going on I don't want to go meet with somebody yet, you know so yeah you don't have to worry about me you do have to worry about her not texting me sure. give us some time it'll happen up here in the spring? Yeah. Yep. Where'd you go to school? Um, high school I went to Whitefield. Did you? Yeah. Well, for like a year and a half and then mm-hmm. I got kicked out. Oh. So I ended up getting my GED, but mm-hmm. did you grow up here? Mm-hmm. What school? I went to Whitefield for about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, go somewhere else after that yeah, or was that just it? <laughs> no, I went to Whitefield and then um, I bounced around town a little bit. Went to yeah. Whitefield, Palmer. And uh, finished out at Sand Creek. So. Uh, my daughter went actually went to Sand Creek. Oh, really? Yeah, I went to Whitefield. My husband went to Whitefield too. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went to Sproul Junior High. Okay. So, for like three weeks, Whitefield was bad. It was yeah. bad school. It was well back with yeah back when I went. It was bad. What, what was your graduation year? Ninety eight. I'm oh four. Okay. My sister was. Yeah, mid nineties is rough down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy. I mean it I don't think it's any much better now. I mean it it's definitely better from when I was a kid, but mm-hmm. it's really crazy though, because at least with my generation, everybody like 
is why soap's got like a name for itself for that type. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's everybody's always like, well, once you if you grew up in Whitefield, you always back, end up back in Whitefield. <laughs> and that's a Whitefield thing. And, oh, yeah, almost everybody in White, you know, who went to Whitefield is either in jail or this or that, you know. <laughs> so it's got that. Yeah. It's definitely got that reputation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't live in Whitefield, but I live close to it. So I'm like... <laughs> but I'm in Lorson Ranch. It's a new neighborhood, so that doesn't count. And I right. tell everybody that all the time. I'm like, this doesn't count as Whitefield. I'm kind it's of secluded the out there, yeah. 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 And it's such a nice neighborhood yeah, and I is. tell you what because of the murder that happened last year there mm -hmm. and then the drug bust that they just had there mm -hmm. and now this now everybody is like oh my god how would anybody ever move into that neighborhood and it's so but I'm like you guys are dumb what you don't understand is it's a new neighborhood and people there are military and a lot of people have money mm -hmm. where do you think people are going to go to rob houses or to they're not going to yeah. go to the ghetto mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that the people came from our neighborhood mm -hmm. it's just I mean if you were going to go do something are you going to go in the ghetto or right. are you going to go into the nice neighborhood where you think where everybody trusts everybody mm -hmm. I mean up until just recently we didn't even lock our front door wow. when we were at home which is stupid I know but now we have ADT <laughs> <laughs> and it's always locked yeah. home or not but yeah. You know, you just, you never know. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I just can't believe how many people are portraying it as such a bad... It's crazy, because it's like 50-50. You got these people that are like, oh my god, that's such a horrible neighborhood now, and oh my god, why would anybody live there? Then you have this other half that, because of this Gannon thing, everybody wants to live there. Mm -hmm. And they're, people are posting, oh, I can't wait till I can get, get a house there. I'm selling my house now, and wow. why? Like, this isn't... It drives me nuts. No, I I will say, <laughs> and I don't I I haven't been as uh, um, uh, I haven't been as involved in that end with like mm -hmm. the search and stuff. Um, but it seems to me like, like you you telling your story about being involved in yeah. like the neighborhood came out and helped look, mm -hmm. and it's it just seeing like the outpouring of support from the neighborhood itself oh yeah it's been really awesome it, yeah. we're an incredible neighborhood i mean we everybody takes care of everybody um a few months ago mm -hmm. the there was a guy killed on his motorcycle out there mm -hmm. um one of the construction worker trucks had lost control i don't remember if he did something happened mm -hmm. but i mean literally a block away from his house you know this motorcyclist gets hit by a truck and he dies Mm -hmm. And immediately our entire neighborhood did nothing, but we put together a family meal train. So for the next month, every single night, dinner was delivered to their house. They didn't have to worry about cooking. They didn't have to worry about mm -hmm. any of that stuff. There were donations that were sent to the family. Mm -hmm. um, the kids were given, you know, little things here and there to kind of perk them up. Um, I mean, we all have each other's back, like yeah. for everything. Um, my husband had lost, or got laid off right before Christmas, and I didn't know how we were going to afford Christmas. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Next thing you know, like, a week before Christmas, somebody rings the doorbell and takes off. We come outside, and there's a huge Christmas tree, hmm. and a bunch of ornaments, and then boxes of food, and boxes of, um, like, presents for the kids, and wow. gift cards, and just from the neighborhood. Wow. And it's like everybody, not everybody, there are some oddballs that yeah. definitely don't fit in very well. But for the most part, I mean, it's its own community. I mean, we've got pay, um, groups where you can order cheesecake to be delivered at your door anytime. Huh. Um, there's a guy who delivers, you know, Mexico, Mexican food. Because we don't have any restaurants or anything right there. Uh, you guys are so far away from everything. Yeah. yeah. So I run the dining in page. Mm -hmm. And we... You can get anything just about. Like, you go on there, you can get desserts delivered to your house. Oh, that's you know, great. We put together Easter events. Um, mm -hmm. For Halloween, we did um, jingle baskets, or uh, boo baskets. And everybody gets assigned a family, and you get a basket, and you fill it up with all this Halloween candy and all this other stuff. You decorate the basket, you go and put it on somebody's door, you ring the doorbell, and you take off, and you try not to get caught. And then Christmas, we did the same thing, jingle baskets. And yeah. it was presents for Utah and how many people are in your house. And everybody gets assigned a family. 
and everybody gets this amazing basket delivered from strangers and that's it's great cool. for the kids the kids all think it's santa claus yeah. i mean that's awesome we all support each other that's inc- great it's so incredible that's one thing that i think is missing you know in the and, yeah. in a lot of areas oh yeah you know, i mean my mom lives in the glen which is like right across from it and they've got like their garage sale page and stuff but they don't do any of that stuff hmm. i mean our neighborhood we shut down streets mm-hmm. and get bouncy houses and food and mm-hmm. like you see on TV we yeah. do the full thing for the kids everything is like kid oriented mm-hmm. we just started sending out our thing for the Easter egg hunt mm-hmm. we're going to have over 5,000 Easter egg hunts and vendors and Jeez. for all of the families and kids to come out and I mean wow. it's it's like a huge so if you think of like Pleasantville mm-hmm. it's like that but not goody goodies because all the moms drink and right. you know yeah. kids are at school hey whatever Yeah. so it's like Pleasantville but the fun style sure <laughs> <laughs> like sense. we actually have real good parties we're not goody goodies that are you know uh uh-huh. so it's just it's it's funny it's crazy that's awesome yeah it's it's a wonder i mean best neighborhood i've ever lived in i couldn't imagine living somewhere else mm-hmm. something like this happens and it does kind of shake things up and some people people come out of the woodworks that you're a little uh, about yeah. you know what i mean but aside from from the few people here and there, it's just, mm-hmm. I mean, it's great. I i get annoyed because <clears throat> a lot of people, I feel, are try to use situations like this to boost businesses and to uh, get some kind of fame, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. So we've got certain ones that have had the news station at their house five times and they're advertising their business because the proceeds are going to the family when really only a hundred of the dollars of the proceeds went to the family but they've called the news themselves four different news stations Mm -hmm. and during their news you know all the questions you hear about Gannon about this much yeah and then you hear about their business about this much Mm -hmm. and I'm like this is an 11 year old boy nobody cares about your damn cake right I mean shut up (laughs) you know so there are some that I feel probably won't be as included in neighborhood things after this. Sure. But. Yeah. Are you making sure it was the right room? Got a little scared there? Make sure you weren't <laughs> on the phone. I'm pretty sure I would have screamed for you if that happened. Uh, <laughs> nothing yet. I know, which is weird. She usually writes me back by now, but there has been a few times that it's gone about an hour or two before I've gotten a response. And it's crazy, because you'll see, I will blow her up. Like, if she doesn't respond, Mm -hmm. I start coming up with more and more things to say to her Uh on a regular basis. So anything I do right now is not going to throw her off. Yeah, it won't throw her off. said, hey, I just want to try and talk to you if I can before my husband gets home. I don't want to keep staring at it because I feel like it makes it not happen. <laughs> but I also feel like if I don't stare at it because I don't actually get notification like sounds that it's kind of unusual, isn't it? Right? <laughs> like, uh, this is an 11 year old boy. Nobody cares about your damn cake. Right. I mean, shut yeah. up. <laughs> you know, so 
there are some that I feel <laughs> like the double sided beer. I've ever seen a setup like that. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes we'll play the drums, sometimes I'll play the bass. Wow. Warrior. Alright, I love you. Bye. We have a couple of things that we can do moving forward. Okay. So, um, ideas as far as um, let's say she doesn't get back to us right away mm -hmm. and it gets to the point where maybe we have to call it a day um, and, um, we have a couple of things that we can do moving forward okay so um, one thing that we can do is if she calls you um, if you, you can if you have a uh, like another phone nearby that has like the um, recorder. Yeah, voice recorder. Just you can record it for us, okay. and then we can take a look at that later. Um, or you can. Tr or and you I can do turn have a spare phone that I can do. That okay, with. or you can turn it back to text. Okay. And just say, hey, listen, I can't talk on the phone right now, but can you text me, or can we text about this, or whatever? Okay. And then and then we can take a look at that. So let me ask you, um, if we do it that way. And she mentions anything about meeting. Mm -hmm. Do I go for that? I mean, obviously, I'm not meeting her mm -hmm. by myself, but do yeah. I? So, so here's here's what we can do. And you've got my number, so yeah. you can you can reach out to me, um, and I'll make sure that you know I coordinate um, on our end with that. Okay. And if she wants to meet, then um, if you can say like if if you can push it out to like Monday or something oh, like that. Oh, which I easily can. Yeah. yeah. So then that would... I'll just blame it on the kids and stuff. Right. Then then maybe that that would give us okay. enough time to... Almost give us time to help. Yeah. Okay. So... I just wasn't sure if I should try and avoid it altogether mm -hmm. or if it's brought up if I should kind of... Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine, you know. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Or even if even if she calls back, um, that's, that's another idea too. If she calls back, you can maybe just send her a text back saying, hey, I, I'm not free to talk right now. Can I call you at this time tomorrow? Okay. Or something like that, and then we and can then let you know. Hey, mm -hmm. this is what's going on. Yeah. Okay. And that works. And then that way we yeah we can we can get back together and, and basically schedule the time that that makes sense. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I'm going to reset my phone, or restart my phone, okay. because I'm, even though I just got a phone call, even my text messages, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like any of them are, my phone, it's brand new, but for some reason my service is not really great, mm -hmm. and just the way that, like, even my ads and stuff aren't playing, I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that it's not something to do with, maybe it's stuck on a tower, or something yeah, my like phone that, yeah. does that sometimes. I mean, especially living in Lorson Ranch, we have one tower out there, so there's no service out there. Mm. And I feel like everywhere I go now, my phone only, it's like, has to kind of kick into this mode sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's so dumb. Yeah. I tell my husband that all the time, and he's like, babe, that's not how phones work. I'm like, I bet you it is. <laughs> I believe it. Phones, phones and, I mean, most electronic devices do need a reboot. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, every so often, and at least a lot of people recommend once a day. And I uh, saw that they put this client thing on here. Do I should I leave that on here for now in case you guys need yeah. to do anything again? Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then if you, I don't know if you'll automatically log back into our Wi-Fi. So if you want to connect to that, that may help you too. Oh, yeah. It's really bad when you can't find your own settings button, and it's right there.
hoping that was the case. I mean, she talked to me about the stupidest things today. When's the last time that um, she messaged, messaged you today? Uh, 11.57. Mm. But I didn't write her again for a couple hours. Because mm -hmm. I told her I was in Denver. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else that would know her well? That what? That would know her well that may, kind of be, that you think I could probably talk to in the neighborhood or do you have any sort of... I'm trying to think of anybody that she actually like hung out with at the time with her. I know she was friends with this one. I'd have to look up her name, but I'd, I don't think I would trust you. I mean, I don't know that you guys would trust anything. I think cause that's one of her, like, confidants or whatever. Huh. Not really. I mean, her daughter, I think, was more active. Hardly was more active with neighbors than I think she was. Which is really weird, but... Let me think about that, because yeah. there might be somebody... Even if they're good friends with her, just someone we may want to talk to down the line. Maybe not now. Maybe maybe so. I know. I don't know how much she knows this lady Kelly, but remember I was telling you guys about her asking about my niece staying at her house. Mm -hmm. I think Kelly called in a tip to you guys too, because she was asking Kelly to ask all kinds of people in the neighborhood to come and house at her house. Hmm. at random times when Al was out of town. I'll go through my messages and see if that if it sounded like it was because they actually know each other and it was her asking her as a friend or if it's just because Kelly knows a lot of people in the neighborhood and she just thought she would have an answer. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Sure. <clears throat> Let me look at that really quick and see how she worded that. I don't think about it. I, I just gotta remember, I know that she's got a couple friends in the neighborhood at, it's just trying to remember who they are. There's so much going on in that neighborhood right now that everything is crazy. Let's see. I do know that she uses an app called Rover. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Okay, so when she was asking <coughs> Kelly to find somebody to help with watching the house, because I have all the messages she had sent Kelly, um, she had told her she found someone using Rover who lives in the neighborhood. Um, I, ha I have Rover. Basically, Rover is for, like, dog walking, um, house sitting, mm. um, things like that. But you download the app, and then you can put, like, I'm looking for somebody to house sit on these dates. Mm. And then you get all these different profiles of different people. Mm. Um, so she uses Rover, and she has met somebody off of Rover. Um, I don't know if you're... I don't know... If, there's a way for you guys to access her rover or something, but mm -hmm. um, there is somebody in the neighborhood I do remember that she met off of rover that became like her normal house sitter slash dog sitter slash <laughs> anything she needed mm -hmm. from the neighborhood babysitter, and she's in our neighborhood. It's somebody in our neighborhood. I don't know who it is. I just know that it's in our neighborhood because she had done a thing on rover. She's not. I can't pull it up now because I'm no longer offering services on Rover and I'd have to go through a whole verification process again. Mm -hmm. But I remember seeing her on there and she had somebody that ended up taking over all of her stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's somebody in the neighborhood. I could potentially find out who it was without making it obvious that I'm trying to do so, but it would take me like a day to do that because I'd have to reset up my account. I just don't remember hearing about her really having any friends, aside from the ones that are on her um, support group. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Her, um, key support group and her, which by the way, she admined on her own at one point and made fake accounts on. And she has another one too. And that's how I know I can tell you one of the people in the neighborhood, because she's got one of her, like, best friends from the neighborhood who is all over this page, mm. and rents all this stuff, so, it would just take me forever to read it right now. <laughs> no, no. I'm telling you, though, these groups are crazy. <clears throat> They're trying to call a dog the bounty hunter is. Really? I'm not even lying. People have called him and Bobby Brown mm-hmm. a freaking bondsman to get them to start doing stuff. Like what? They say law enforcement isn't working hard enough and doing their job. So why don't we call these people? And a bunch of people hit up Dog the Bounty Hunter. Mm-hmm. And he's interested. Bobby Brown is interested mm-hmm. in helping. <laughs> I just sit back and watch these things because, you know. See, and Jane, remember I was telling you guys, I had kind of told Jane, I didn't tell her what was going on, but I told her I needed information on how to get a hold of somebody. Mm-hmm. I know that she's really close with Landon and them. I need to figure out how to handle that situation because she did know that I was contacting you guys, but now she's been blowing me up all day, asking me, did, they, did you talk to them? She wants me, she's like, let me know how it goes, and if you do want to talk, let me know. She's like, I'm tight-lipped. Um, I'd like for you to come over and, ha- and talk with me. And then she just wrote me again, did they talk to you? I know I shouldn't have told anybody I was talking to you guys, but I didn't have any way to get a hold of you guys. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to think of the best way to... Could I do something as simple as I talk to them and it wasn't really credible so we just kind of left it at that or something sure uh, and she's the one if i remember right is she is she the one that she reached out to to try and get a hold of one of law enforcement yeah because she's the one that holds all the events in the neighborhood and she's the one okay. who i so she's so now she she's says being she's she says she's something yeah and what i mean by that is so she didn't know the family but then she started setting up all these mm-hmm. events like the candle vigil and the search parties. So now she's close to Lane and then the family. Mm-hmm. And now she's telling me that she wants me to come over so she can tell me her position and what's going on. And she says um, things like, I personally cannot have any involvement with this case, but I can better explain that to you later. It's because of my position in it. So she's trying to make it sound like she's some kind of role Mm-hmm. In the invest, I don't know. Why do you think? That, what's your thoughts on why they think you came over here, or we're coming over, or we're trying to get a contact? What do you think their perceptions are? I don't know, and I think that's what's bothering them. Okay. Um, because I very clearly said I cannot discuss this information with anybody aside from law enforcement. Okay, so they, oh, so they think you have information too. I did say. Um, I will. I said I will let you know. I because I didn't want them to be like, oh my god, oh my god, she knows where Gannon is. Mm-hmm. I did tell her. I said I need to speak with law enforcement. Um, I will let you know. I don't know anything about Gannon's location. I have no sightings or anything else. But it is extremely important to the case, or it could be extremely important to the case. Mm-hmm. So I didn't give details, but I made sure it was known that it's not anything to do with Gannon or anything. Mm -hmm. And I know I shouldn't have done that, but I was trying so hard to reach somebody and I just couldn't. I understand. I think what you just came up with is fine. I mean, you're just, just from, from our interaction with you this afternoon, I mean, you've got, you've got a pretty level head on your shoulders and you've, you obviously do a good job of thinking through your decisions. Oh yeah. So, um, You may just say, yeah, I went there and I was more frustrated than anything because nothing seems to be happening. And I okay. just wanted to go over there and, you know, 
tell him what I knew about that search that night again and try to get some information, you know, something yeah. like that. And, and it really, it really, it really didn't go anywhere. Yeah. See, and my biggest thing with her is she's so close to Landon and them that when she was begging me to give her the info, the only thing I could think of is if I even gave her a, an inch of it, yeah. um, then Landon and, and them are told it, and then they say something to T. Yeah, then no, that's certainly. All back to me. It should, it should, it, it should be. You know, you, you tried your best to do something, and you know they really nothing really happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. I tried my hardest to help, and it. I mean, it. Yeah, and he was even saying, "I'm yeah. just frustrated at this point. I don't feel it like kind anything's of, happening." It kind of blew but, me off. You know. Yeah, it kind of blew me off. There wasn't anything okay. relevant after all. That works. So, well, listen. I think we're gonna call it a night. Okay. So. Um, and I will. So I, th- I think the best idea moving forward is probably. Um, if she tries to call you, let's let's try that first. Text okay. her back. Say, hey, I can't. I'm not in a place to talk right now. I'd love to though. Can talk to us tomorrow this time where okay. I can get away from my husband or whatever. Yeah, I just had a fight. With, you know, whatever yeah. you want to say. And I did tell her at the beginning of this. I was like, I don't, because she asked, she's like, I want to trust you. I can't talk to anybody. And I said, I won't even talk to my husband. Yeah. So that's a perfect idea. Okay. Hey, my husband's home. Let's do this tomorrow. I know he'll be at work. Blah blah blah. Perfect. And then I'll reach out to you. Yep. Okay. You can call me directly, and then Perfect. I'll I'll get a hold of my supervisors. And and if for some reason you don't answer, I could text you. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Just because then I'll get anxious. Yeah. No, that's fine. Like, she's not answering. <laughs> Please yeah. answer me right now. Yep. I didn't sleep for an entire night once all these messages came in because I was sure. so worried about what to do with it. So. No, you're good. I know that sounds dumb, but I'm just one of those. I over worry. So. Yeah. And it's okay, to, res- it's okay to respond to her. If she's texting you and you say, you know, I, I thought about what you did and, uh, or your position and, you know, I really i am hurting right now and really, but, but I need to, I'd like to talk to you. Okay. So, I mean, it's okay. Well, to, now that you guys know, now I feel safe doing it. Good. But when I was kind of going along with it before, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, somebody's going to be, the FBI is watching her phone. They're seeing this. They're Every time somebody knocks on my door, it's going to be them coming to get me because they think I'm about to do some kind of scandal in this or something. Well, if only. And I, I honestly wasn't no, trying to yeah. do that, but I, it's the only way I could get him to talk. Sure. No. And I mean, I'm not, I know I'm not a detective, but she was talking, and I'm like, mm-hmm. if she's going to say something, maybe I can know something. Yeah. Just bring him on. just fine. So, oh, yeah. I appreciate it. I honestly did feel like I was going to be in some trouble mm-hmm. because of the fake account and because of people do fake accounts all the time. Don't don't sweat that. I know. I just, uh, I really was like, (coughs) and that's why when I talked to you on the phone, I said, I'm going to be honest with you about something. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't know if I can get in trouble. And I don't ever want to get in trouble for what I do. Sure. So, I'm a mom of five. I can't afford to get a (laughs) phone. Sure. God, my kids, I'll tell you what, my (laughs) husband can't handle it much, so. Right. And he's only stepdad, so that makes it worse. Well, you have enough battery. Yeah, yeah. You're pretty good. And I definitely appreciate how amazing you guys were with me because even though I didn't do anything wrong, I still get nervous with these kinds of situations. Perfectly acceptable. Especially when I walk in the front door and he says he's here to meet you and he says I'm FBI. Uh-huh. And then he looks over and he goes, are you Nicole Mobley? And I'm like, yeah. Uh. <laughs> he scared me on purpose. No, I'm just Okay, so that was the interview with Nicole Mobley, and I know it's hard to listen to at times, (laughs) Um, but I tried to edit it as best as I could. Even when she's rambling at times, she could. She's still giving you little nuggets of things, and you hear that. You know, you get to hear what the cops are asking her, and 
And then at the end, obviously, you hear them coaching her on what to do to make this controlled call or controlled text message string, you know, to make it work. Somebody said in chat, it was a, you know, it was a really good thought. Um, they should have wrote down on a piece of paper for everything that they wanted her to ask. Um, that didn't dawn on me, you know, whenever I was listening to it. So, where are we at on the poll? And I'm going to, we're going to do the poll for at least two lives because we're, we're kind of light tonight. We've been averaging over a thousand people. We're only, we've been hovering around between seven and seven fifty. So I want to make sure everybody gets a say so in it for all those who want to um, vote. So we'll do we'll do tonight and I gotta check with my mods to see how they are for tomorrow night. Tomorrow night it'll either be jail calls or well if I get it, the stuff that I paid for today, if I get it tomorrow, I'll just put the dollar store footage in the background for the calls. Because obviously, you know, there's no audio or anything on them of Lena and Harley at the dollar store. Um, so tomorrow night will be jail calls. And it's, it's a... It's an interesting batch. I have them re ready to go, so. On that note, thank you all for hanging out with us. Thank you, Mods, for your time as always. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to everybody who donated and became members on the coffee app. I haven't gotten to that app yet, but I will. Um, and to all the docketeers, OG or new, thank you for hanging out with us. And make sure you leave your thumb on that DNA guy. Oh, Leave your thumb on the DNA. Oh, it's been a long, it's been a day. <laughs> Leave your DNA on the thumb, please. And we will see you all probably tomorrow night. Night, guys. <laughs>